This is a comparison of mitosis and meiosis uh, side by side. Here we go. So again, it, what, what step is this right here? Uh, is it mitosis? No. And here's a good hint. When it's mitosis, they look like chromosomes, so they look like X's. Right now, it looks like spaghetti all over the place. And that's because the DNA is uncoiled. It's not wound up uh, around those uh, histone proteins to make chromosomes yet. Not yet. Right now, it's just all over the place. Um, and so it's called chromatin. So you can identify that right away. Um, and so again, this is interface. So you're going to be going through G1. It's going to grow. S, the DNA is going to be copied, and then G2. Um, you also see it as part of interphase in one of the G1 uh, phases, uh, or G1, the centrals duplicate. You want to double them up as well. Again, that happens over here in meiosis, over here in mitosis. Um, and then now we're going to get started with, uh, you know, prophase. Once the cell's big enough, we're ready for prophase. Uh, we're ready to start mitosis. So what happens in prophase? Well, the nucleus starts condensing. So remember that. So now, uh, not the nucleus, sorry, the chromosomes. They start condensing. So now they look like X's. There you go. And also over here. But you see a big difference that over here they're unpaired. Over here they are paired. Remember, it's still diploid. Here's the one from mom, the one from dad, the one from uh, dad, the one from mom. Again, they're homologous because they have the same size. Same size here, same size here, same size there. But they're pairing up over here in meiosis and not in mitosis. Also, the nucleus gets to disappear. As you all know, that's, that happens in prophase. You get to see the chromosomes again. And um, also, the, what are some other things? You start seeing the spindle fibers form. And so, again, the spindle fi fibers are forming. They're starting to carry the chromosomes to where they need to go. And it's going to take us uh, to the next part. Um, but rem remember in prophase, in prophase 1 of meiosis, that the chromosomes start to shuffle their DNA. They start doing crossing over. They start touching, and a piece goes from dad onto the mom's chromatid, and then from mom's onto dad's. And so you start getting all these wonderful combinations of new possibilities of sperm or egg. Moving on now. Then we get to metaphase. Notice the difference. In metaphase, you have a single file lineup, and all the chromosomes are there. Except here in, in meiosis, where it's metaphase 1, you have them line up as homologous pairs. So look at that, single file, double file, in pairs, and same size. Okay, so then, um, and keep in mind, uh, here it doesn't matter how they line up, they're, you're going to get the same identical cells on both sides. But here, um, there's many different ways to line up. I put mom's chromosome here, and I put mom's over here. But who knows, maybe both of mom's could have been on this side, and both the dads could have been on this side. So you have a lot of combinations. How they line up doesn't really matter, and it's random, it's independent. Um, but as long as you have uh, homologous chromosomes in pairs, that's the main thing that needs to happen. And so that's a lot of independent assortment. You get a lot of varieties of different sperm or egg because of this law. Then next thing is anaphase. Again, anaphase, a uh, regular of mitosis, you, the chromatids are going to separate, whereas here they don't separate. The only thing separating are the chromosomes themselves. The homologous uh, chromosome pairs separate. So there's no breaking of chromatids like there is in mitosis. Um, but the main thing is this is a crucial step. Um, this is called the law of segregation in meiosis because it uh, turns the, the number from diploid to haploid. Um, also, you go from having uh, you know, four chromosomes here to two or you cut the number of chromosomes by half. So let's keep going there. And now you end up over here with the telophase. And now here the, both you can see two identical nuclei, uh, two different nuclei. And that's the point of mitosis and meiosis. And then we keep going. And notice the cytoplasm is split. So this must be cytokinesis of mitosis, cytokinesis 1 of meiosis. And we go ahead and cut it all the way up. And in interphase, um, we're all done over here. This is not even interphase. You're done. This part keeps going. Meiosis goes into two rounds. The chromosomes do not re replicate during this phase. Um, they're just going to continue on to the next part. So interphase, nothing really is going on. We move on to the next part. We go into prophase uh, part two. Now what happens here? Is there a crossing over? No, we already did crossing over. So no crossing over in prophase two. 
um, we just keep going. Here are the same things. Nuclear membrane starts to um, starts to go away, and the spindle fibers are going to start forming, and um, we're going to move all the chromosomes along the middle. So this looks just like mitosis, uh, and because you can see everything in a single file line. And now you guessed it. We are going to separate the chromatids by the centromere. So look at that. There goes anaphase, telophase. Uh, this is all part two. And then we finally get our final product, the cytokinesis. And look at all the cells. How many cells do we make? Four. How many do we make here? Two. And all these are different. We started with four. We end up with how many? Two. Over here, we started with four. We ended up with how many? Four. We keep the same number here. We cut the number by half over here. The cell cycle is a complex series of continuous events consisting of interphase and mitosis. During interphase, the nucleus and the darker staining nucleolus can be clearly seen. The DNA is copied. The chromosomes cannot yet be seen because they are still in the form of uncoiled chromatin. In animal cells, the centrioles duplicate themselves. In prophase, the chromatin coils to form visible chromosomes. The nuclear envelope and nucleolus disappear, and a spindle forms between the pairs of centrioles, which have moved to opposite ends of the cell. In metaphase, the chromosomes move to the equator of the spindle, with each chromatid attached to a separate spindle fiber by its central mirror. During anaphase, the central mirrors split and the sister chromatids are pulled apart to opposite poles of the cell. Each chromatid is now a separate chromosome. Telophase is the final phase of mitosis. In telophase, two daughter cells are formed. With a complete set of chromosomes at each end of the cell, the cytoplasm divides, the nucleolus and nuclear envelope reappear, and the chromosomes begin to uncoil. When the new cells are separated, they enter interphase, and a new cycle begins. This diagram gives you an overview of meiosis. As you can see, there were two rounds of nuclear division in meiosis. During meiosis, a diploid nucleus becomes four haploid nuclei. Look just at the steps of the first round of nuclear division, which is called meiosis I. This division reduces the chromosome number from diploid to haploid. Here is a diploid cell beginning meiosis. The cell's chromosomes were copied before meiosis began, so each of the four chromosomes consists of two chromatids. Notice that there are two pairs of chromosomes. The chromosomes in each pair are the same size and shape. The colored bands show that they also carry the same genes. Different shades of color show that there can be different versions of a gene. Two chromosomes that are the same size and shape and carry the same genes are called homologous chromosomes. During meiosis I, homologous chromosomes come together at the equator of the cell. This process is called synapsis. When two homologous chromosomes get close together, pieces of their chromatids are often traded. Next, the homologous chromosomes separate. They then move toward opposite poles of the cell. This ensures that each new cell gets one chromosome from each pair. Notice that the two chromatids of each chromosome stay attached by their centromeres. Cytokinesis then divides the cell. So in meiosis I, we go from one nucleus with two sets of chromosomes to two nuclei with one set of chromosomes. Now look at the second round of nuclear division. This is called meiosis II. Here are the two daughter cells that formed after meiosis I. During meiosis II, the centromeres of each chromosome divide. The chromatids separate and move toward opposite poles of the cell. Cytokinesis then divides the daughter cells. After two rounds of division, a diploid cell has split into four haploid cells during meiotic cell division.